Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends at Yarnspirations.com. This is a sudden stitch along. Um, this pattern came to me from a conversation I had with Yarnspirations. They know that I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs when it comes to uh, stitch texture. And they said, have I seen this? And I'm like, you know, slobbering all over myself because I love texture. And also this is uh, at the uh, RAN Toggle Wrap. So it is a wrap. So I thought, well, gee, this would be a great opportunity. And it's a big pattern, but the way that you tackle big patterns is that you divided up the videos to be able to give people an opportunity to work their way through this concept. So what I decided to do is that I decided the other night, because this literally just landed on my plate, is that I decided that I'm going to work on rows number one through 18 of the beginning of the right side first. So that's today's tutorial. And it will take you a bit of time here because we're gonna be doing the mock seed stitch when it comes to crochet to do the first section here. For this particular one, it's six millimeter size J crochet hook with six balls of Red Heart Super Saver, but I am using Karen One Pound in the color taupe and you'll only need three balls for that if you're gonna substitute the yarn. Now, this is a really cool concept and um, you have to be a little bit patient with anything with texture. I almost wanted to call this the stitch pig um, stitch along because anything with texture doubles up the thickness of the of the fabric itself. So this here is going to be nice and warm to be able to go. So throughout this uh, series, it's going to be releasing on Thursday. So I'm going to commit to that. <laughs> I should be committed anyway. Um, but I'm going to be working my way through and I'm going to be dividing up the pattern in a way that this makes sense. I don't fully understand the pattern yet because I haven't gone that far and enough into this to completely understand. And the way that I like to uh, tackle big things is that I like just to work on it step by step in order to get through the concept. So that's kind of fun. So what I'm going to do with you today is that I'm going to work my way through rows number one through 18. I'm only gonna show you a small swatch because once you understand the swatch, it's the same thing as just being big, uh, being bigger. And it will allow me to just get a step ahead because this thing just landed on my plate like an anvil. And you know, I can always say no, but I was so like head over heels for this. So without further ado, we're going to be doing what you see here. This is rows one through 18. And you're going to notice that there's a repeat. So at the very base of here, I just kind of put my numbers from four to 17. It says rows number four through 17. I found with myself, I needed to do a little check sheet for myself and that's what we did. One more thing, I'm gonna show you a swatch right now, but the rest of this tutorial, I, I will be building on top of this. I just needed to get a step ahead. That's all I'm saying. So as we begin today, you should know that I did go to college, I did graduate, but I went for engineering, for industrial uh, uh, engineering. So I never went to fashion school. And the reason why I'm telling you that is that this is just a one size project. So I don't know the, uh, how to change this project in order to match other sizes. So I'm just gonna stick with it and just go with it. And um, that's all I can offer. Once you have your slip knot on here, I need you to chain 149. I'm only gonna do a small swatch with you, but just chain 149 and then meet me back here in just a moment. So as promised, I'm just gonna show you a small swatch. So third chain from the hook, I want you in the back hump because it will look nicer. I want you to double crochet all the way across your chain. And when you do this, you are only gonna end up with 148 stitches when you come all the way across. Okay, so that is the secret to keep that in balance. So please do this all the way across and, uh, and put me on hold now. I'm gonna show you a cheating technique. So once you get all the way across over, I want you to change it the way that it says. I find with myself is that I screw up when I use a chain two as counting as a stitch, I find that I miss it. So how I did my sample, and you can decide if you wanna do it. So chain two and then do the, the advanced stitch work or do it my way and just chain one, that counts as nothing, and put a half double crochet in the very first one, which will count as a chain two. I find that I always miss the chain two if I count it as a stitch versus doing what I just did and it will look just as good. You're going to start off in the next post down and you want to start off with a front post double crochet. So wrap the hook and going in and across and just double crochet in the front post. And then coming into the next one here, double crochet into the back post, so in behind. This is in an uh, intermediate level. 
So then you're just gonna alternate between the two of these. So the next one is in the front post. And the next one is in the back post. Okay. The next one is in the front post. And so then the next one is in the back post. And I want you to put me on hold now and continue to do this all the way across the row and I'll show you how to finish the row. So it states in the very last stitch to make it as a front post double crochet and that's keeping in balance, right? That you see. The problem for me is that I always think it looks a little off. So what I will do here in this last one, this chain uh, that we skipped over doesn't count as anything. I would just double, sorry, half double crochet into the last one. So ignore it that you need to do a front post double crochet in the very last one. I find it kind of turns the edge, but if you prefer that, you can go ahead and do that. Let's do row number three. In row number three, you're gonna turn your work and you're going to do opposite to what you see. So remember my little tip, you can either chain two and it counts as a stitch, or my tip is just chain one and just half double crochet in the very first stitch, which I think it looks great. Do you see that this is coming towards you? I want you to put this in now in the back. So you're going to do a back post double crochet around that and it will pull it behind. This one here is in the back, do you see that? You're gonna bring it forward and make it a front post double crochet. And you're gonna alternate between the two stitches going all the way across on row number three here. You're going to find that this stitch will take you a while to do. And that's one of those nice things that this pattern is that it's thickening up the yarn to being more thicker. So to get out of your head that it's taken forever and just realize that you're doubling up on the thickness here and that's what it takes to do it. So your very last one is gonna be, the one before the edge is a front post double crochet. And on the very last one, this technically should be a back post double crochet, but I'm telling you to ignore it and just half double crochet into the final. And so you end up looking like this. So all you gotta do now is begin to do rows number uh, four through to 18, and you're alternating between the two stitches. So right now you have three rows complete, and so you just chain up one and you start row number two again. So you see how this is in behind? You, you have to half double crochet the first one first, and then this one is in behind, so bring it forward with a front post double crochet. The next one is in the front, so take it and put it in behind. So as you complete each row, you need to complete it so that you are getting things done. Okay, so you're getting all the rows done. I found with myself, I checked it off on the sheet because it makes me feel like I'm getting somewhere, but it also allows me to make sure that I end on the proper side. So while we're here, I want us to label what is the good side of the work and what is the bad side of the work. So let's just get into the end and we're just gonna half double crochet into the end. And let me just put in a right side and a wrong side, or just actually just let's put in a right side uh, stitch marker. And the right side is technically the side that we're looking at and that's why I'm stopping right here. This is the good side. So the tail should be on this side here. It's normally on the other side. But if you looked at the instruction, row number one was the wrong side, which is opposite to what we're used to doing. So I want you just to put a stitch marker on this side of the work. And so every time that you see the stitch marker in front of you, you know that you're on the right side of the work. And this will be the side that if somebody was watching or looking at you wearing this, this is the side that they would be looking at. So put that in. So I need you to complete all the way to row number 18. And then that's where I'm gonna pick you up in the next video to do this and you end up with a big panel um, like I have here. Okay, so you'll have a nice big long panel and when you look at the model, you'll notice that the, the this is going up 
and over and down. So you're doing the whole formation going right up over top. It's not over her shoulder because it's hanging down, but that's what we're doing. So I need you to complete all that and get up to row number 18 done now. And I'll see you next time and next Thursday for row number 19. And if this is filmed for later and then you catch it later, um, we'll have these all linked together in a playlist in the video description. Until next time, we'll see you.